One, two, three, four. This video series has tips for musicians wanting to develop musicianship skills in order to pursue it for a lifetime. It does cater specifically to self-taught musicians who are in constant need of guidance and assurance about the difficult path that they have chosen to walk on. In this part, I will request you to bear with me for a while as I first do the groundwork to set the foundation for an analogy that I will choose to refer to in subsequent parts. Here, I will also talk about a few essential musicianship skill sets. I will then use this analogy in a practical musical situation. Thereafter, I will draw inferences from this situation which will eventually lead me to the first set of tips in this video series. Now imagine music to be an infinitely tall cylindrical building with multiple floors in it where each floor has multiple rooms in it. Now consider that the process of you developing your musicianship skills over a period of time can be compared to climbing up the floors of this imaginary building which means that the higher the floor that you are at the more developed you are in your quest of honing your musicianship skills. Now to take this analogy further I'd like to touch upon a few essential skill sets that musicianship constitutes. Mind you this list is by no means exhaustive and I'm only using it to make my point. If you are an instrumentalist, then you might have separate technical and musical goals or skill sets that you might want to work towards. Again, if you are an instrumentalist, sight reading could be a very important practice component. Music theory is about understanding the grammar of the language of music, hence it is very fundamental in nature and common to all musicians. Ear training is about developing the ability to visualize music in our mind's ear such that we can interpret or create music in our brains. Needless to say, a very essential faculty. Composition is a primary channelization of our creativity such that we get to write the complete musical piece as in the main melody, a counterpoint melody probably, two or three part harmonies, rhythmic structure, so on and so forth. Transcribing is the realization of our ability to understand, interpret and finally write music on paper or in a music editor or production software. Songwriting is an amalgamation of a lot of the skill sets I've described above with an additional emphasis on lyrical writing which deals with understanding the art of poetry and using it for song making. Arranging is about reconceptualizing a complete or an existing piece of music such that we could probably alter its main melody, we could alter the orchestration that is the sequencing or combination of instruments, we could reharmonize it or probably modify or change the complete structure of the piece. Finally, recording deals with the technical and scientific aspect of sound and the nuances of capturing it in any media, be it analog or digital. Coming back to the analogy, imagine that developing overall musicianship skills can be compared to a treasure hunt inside this infinitely tall building called music where the treasure lies at the very top. Now, recall that this building has multiple floors and each floor has multiple rooms in it. What I've shown here is the top view of one such floor with multiple rooms in it. Let's try and understand how this treasure hunt really works. Now, in every floor, there is one room with a secret staircase that leads you up to the floor above. You mount it with an X. And all the rooms are peppered with an undisclosed amount of clues that either directly or indirectly lead to this room. Now mind you, in every floor, the room with the secret staircase could be any one of the rooms. Now let's take two scenarios of approaching this treasure hunt. 
In scenario one, the candidate chooses arbitrarily to go into this room, let's say. And what he does is he starts unearthing some clues along the way. And as he sees the clues, unfortunately, he's not able to make much sense of them. But what he decides is he's going to dig further for more clues inside the same room. Now, recall that he's not wrong in doing so because there are an undisclosed amount of clues in every room. So he continues to dig for clues in the same room. And unfortunately, as he keeps digging, the clues that come his way are really making no sense to him. Now let's look at scenario two, where the candidate comes into the same room, starts unearthing some clues, and as these clues come by his way, he's, he quickly understands or realizes that they are not making too much sense to them, to him. And what he decides is to go off into any other room and try his luck there. So he ventures off into this room, and quickly he starts unearthing some clues, which this time start to make some sense to him. And what happens is, these clues that he finds in this room leads him to, let's say, this room where he starts to unearth more clues and slowly and steadily he finds that the clues that he's unearthed this time actually lead him to the room with secret staircase that leads him up to the floor above in the treasure hunt.